My father was born in Europe, in Hungary. And he came here when he was 10 years old. When he was a young boy, five, six years old, it was five o'clock in the morning by the Malamed, before he came to America. He had the qualities of deep, rooted Messiah, but then afterwards, he schooled over here. I mean, he graduated. The boys looked at him as, this is American product. Second year high school, I was in Rabbi Weiss's shear. His was a star shear. He had to check you out in advance. He allowed me to come to his shear because he knew my father, and I was allowed into the shear conditionally, on the condition that I do well. Gave the shear in Yiddish, so he gave us the impression as if he does know English. Then we found out he came to America as a young child. Of course he knew English. And then later on at the end of the year, he took my notes. He liked my notes, right? Reb Moshe Salvechi was one of the Goone Ador, and of course the oldest son of Reb Chaim Salvechi. And he became very friendly to Rabbi Weiss. He was, of course, very young, so I didn't even know who Rabbi Weiss was. But I only knew him through what I used to hear in the house on Shabbos as a young man in my home. It was in the heart of the Jewish community in the Bronx. The Bronx was very important. A lot of these boys used to come to listen to my father. They spent Shabbos in their home. And one of the names that reverberated was Rabbi Weiss's name. And you heard it over and over again. At one time he gave a regular shir, and then later he gave the chulun shir, your day shir. He was one of the very outstanding young talmud chacham. He graduated high school in 1939 and he was giving a Rav's review shear in 1938. He <laughs> was still in high school and he was teaching the review shear for the Rav. It must have been uh, something amazing. Same age like our Baron Soloveitchik, and they used to learn together by the father of Moshe Soloveitchik. Shabbos, not during the shear, he used to learn extra by Moshe Soloveitchik. I had the privilege of being in Rabbi Weiss's Yeridea shear. When you walked into Rabbi Weiss's shear, and you really felt that you were meeting a previous generation. He was very precise because he realized that many of us in this room would be practitioners on issues of kashrut, and he wanted to make sure that we got it right. There was once a student in the yeshiva, a very bright fellow, very worldly, and part of my job, of course, was to place him in Rabbi Weiss's shear and I was concerned that there might be a clash of outlooks. This fellow had a very broad outlook. Rav Weiss represented tradition in the yeshiva. I wasn't sure how it was going to work out. I bumped into this fellow a few months later, and I asked him, how is the shir going? He said, it's tremendous. It's the best thing I've ever experienced. And he sits down with Rav Weiss, the Bechaber, the Ramah, they all come to life, that he's become part of that tradition through Rav Weiss. But he said for the first time in his life, Rav Weiss made him feel that this is this piece of the Masora. Rabbi Weiss's bechinas were intense. As somebody who has gone through a master's and is finishing a PhD, I can tell you the bechinas that Rabbi Weiss gave us were as comprehensive as any test that I've ever taken. Each bechina took us 12 hours to complete. We would sit in a room and we would literally write one examination booklet for each one of the questions. He wasn't a teacher that, you know, we just submitted the material. We got it back. First of all, there was a grade on it. If he had any comments, they were within the booklet itself. And if there were any spelling mistakes, whether they were Hebrew or in English, Rabbi Weiss would fix the spelling mistakes. It says that if your Rebbe lives within 12 mil of you, you should always ask him first before Paskin a Shiloh. My first Stella was just down the block from where he lived. When I told him that I received the Steller, it didn't dawn on him to wait for me to ask the question. He put his arm around my shoulder and he told me sometimes where there's a, a difficult question, Chosh Mishpah, whatever it may be, right, I'm always there for you. He told me, listen, Eliezer, you don't have to ask me every time. And whenever we all brought the children to my father to visit, the first thing they knew was Lanster, what are you learning? What Misachta? What Daf? Oh, is he holding in that and that sugya? What does Rashi say over there? You saw the rush, Kiveg over there, and that was cold anywhere in Shah. Some people were <laughs> terrified of coming, but... And then he would say, you know the last time I learned this? No. Ah, uh, it was about 55 years ago. Busy with your day, sometimes you didn't get to all the other sugis. I remember walking into Rabbi Weiss's office once and sharing with him that I had to miss a day of shear in order to travel to Eretz Yisrael. And Rabbi Weiss's reaction was, no, you can't go, you can't miss a day of shear. At the end of the year, when Rabbi Weiss called me into the office, he said to me, Glasser, you did very well on the Bechina, except for the sugya of Hudchu Karos. And that was the sugya from the day you missed when you went to the wedding in Eretz Yisrael. But Rabbi Weiss was giving me a message for life, and that is, every word of Torah could affect our lives and empower us to be greater up on it. He told us that we should eat oatmeal for breakfast. We shouldn't speak when we ate. Waking up in the morning, saying Moda'ani, davening, coming to shear, learning, simple avodas Hashem. I went to him for personal advice. When I was dating and relationship building, he was very, very kind, someone who truly cared about his Talmudim. Many, many years, 
I had the, the kavod and the pleasure of, of discussing with him Hilchos Refuah B'Shabbos. He was always anxious to know how my father was, that's how Moshe Feinstein ruled on these specific cases. We were both teaching wonderful Talmudim in the yeshiva and, and we often spoke about it, about how fortunate we are to be able to spend our days this way. Two years ago, we had the great tzuchos to bring Rabbi Weiss back to the yeshiva. It had been quite a number of years that Rabbi Weiss was continuing to teach in his apartment, but he hadn't been on campus to speak to the students in almost a decade. He hadn't seen the new base medrash. It was an unbelievable day. To see the look both of Rav Weiss's face when he entered the new base medrash, the look on the students' faces when they saw this gadol batora, there was a sense in that room that something beautiful was being passed from Rav Weiss and his mentors to the Rabbanim to the Talmidim of tomorrow. The Rav was homebound. A few of us used to go up and visit him every Shabbos after shul. The day before he was taken to the hospital, we had Shabbos Hanukkah, we gave a 10 minute drush after davening. He just, he belted it out and always insightful. A Chiddush delivered with clarity. It was great, something very special also that we were able to do this so close to the Petir. My father's a Chetzatik Tavrocha. He would take us on trips constantly learn with us. He was very involved. We felt this is life. Every pulse, every beat. Mm -hmm.